Hey everyone, this is Mike from Portland Pinups back with another On One Workflow video for you. Today I'm going to cover my workflow for turning a composite portrait, which in this particular case is a model shot in the studio with a background which is a stock shot, and how to turn it into a grungy awesome portrait that looks like it's real and not in fact a composite. We're going to cover using various different filters to give that final look, including bringing in a custom texture which we're going to use to give some extra oomph to this picture. So let's dive right in. So here we are in the effects module and you can see the portrait a bit closer and you can see there's a little bit of a disconnect between Nikki and the background in that she's very contrasty and the background isn't quite matching her contrast. Now I could have taken care of that when I created the composite but I know how I want this final image to look as far as tone and drama goes and I'm going to take care of all of that using filters. So the first thing I'm going to do which is something that I do with pretty much every single composite that I make is I'm going to add some dynamic contrast this preset here. What this does is help marry together your foreground and background images and help sell the fact that they weren't taken at the same time. Three different sliders we can play with, small, medium and large. I always crank up the small a little bit to give it a bit more crispiness and crunchiness because that's how I like my portraits and I usually bring down the large and the medium slightly. If I turn that off and on you can see the difference it's making, a bit more oomph and crispiness to the image and it helps put the two together. There are various different presets that you can use already done and maybe one of those is to your liking. I do like to play with the sliders myself though. The settings you're going to use for dynamic contrast will vary greatly depending on the size of the image you're working on, what camera you shot it on, what ISO you shot it on, all those different factors go into how much of the small, medium and large and whether or not you need to play with the tone while you're doing so. But I'm quite happy with that with mine. The next thing I usually do to an image like this is give a bit of a vignette around the edges. It is really bright up the top here and I want the focus to be on Nikki herself, not the overall image. At the moment it's pretty flat. We need to bring out some contrast and make her pop, so let's add a vignette. Lots of different um, presets here already, like all filters within um, on one, they come with lots of different presets for you to play with. You might find one of those is to your liking. I actually do find that one is to my liking very often and it's called Big Softy. Just that on its own without tweaking any of the settings is usually how I like my vignettes to go. It's darkened down the edges here, maybe it's a little dark down here but again what I want the focus on is this area here, the lovely Nikki. Okay next I'm going to play with the tone of this image slightly and what I want to do here, I know I just closed down the background but what I want to do is open up some of the details a little bit to allow me to darken it down in subtle ways later on. So I'm going to add a filter, I'm going to do Tone Enhancer. I'm going to do something that may seem a bit counterintuitive here given how much contrast I love in my images. I'm going to reduce the contrast. I'm going to bring it all the way down to about 50 or so. That's going to help me in a couple of ways. First of all it's going to open up the shadows a little bit which is what I want. It's also going to close down this bright spot slightly. And I'm also now going to crank open the shadows quite a bit, somewhere around the 50 area, something like that. And you can see that's again giving me much more detail in Nikki and these stairs, which I will take care of later on with a few different tricks. Now, now in my head I see this portrait very much as a toned, black and whitey, dark, grungy type picture. So let's add a filter and we're going to click black and white. Now there are lots of different conversion processes you can use. There are presets or you can tweak the sliders here. I think for this portrait, the standard black and white as it comes looks really nice. I'm just going to click a few of these and see if anything appeals to me better. I like the way that's darkened the background slightly. But I think the red conversion, what's the difference between red and green there? Not much. The red and green isn't anything at all. Yellow is a bit brighter. Infrared is destroying the skin too much. I think I'm going to stick with just the plain red conversion there. What I am going to do though is really up the film grain. Now at the moment with this particular red setting, the amount of grain is zero. I'm going to crank that all the way to 100 and I'm going to make the size bigger, I'm going to pick Ilford Delta 3200, which is really, really nice. The only other one I might choose there is T-Max 3200. What's the difference between those two? Very little, but T-Max was always my favourite. It should be a slightly bigger grain. Let's have a look at Nikki's face. Lots of nice, lovely grain all over the place. And you can see, because we've now added grain to the background and the foreground on top of both, it's helping it look as if she was actually photographed there. Now as I said, I want this image to be kind of like a toned black and white and I see it as having a bit of a blue tone because I'm guessing that Nikki feels a little bit blue sitting there on the steps. I'm going to add a filter and click photo filter. And if you click more you can see that it comes preloaded with all the filters that landscape photographers used to have in their bag and screw on the front of their lenses, the nice warming filters and a tobacco grad. 
But what we're going to use today is just a standard color filter. Just a filter type is going to be solid and we're going to click on color. Various different ways you can choose your color. You can just click the color wheel and find the color you want. I'm going to click over here on the right with the web. That's web colors. And anyone who's done any website building knows that the little hashtag and the four digit, uh, six digit code at the end there can give you any number of colors and that's how you specify colors for the web. We can also do that with an on one and specify a sp particular color. And the one I played with earlier on is 397FC2, which is kind of like a blue color. There we go, that's the blue I want. Now I'm gonna alter these settings here to give it a bit more of a strong, awesome, punchy look. First thing I'm gonna do is up the amount that we're adding. So obviously if we go all the way, we're adding blue over everything. And if we go all the way down, we're not adding blue to anywhere. I wanna go about halfway, somewhere between 40 and 50, something like that. I'm gonna leave the saturation where it is but I'm going to add polarizer all the way up to 100. And you can see what that did. If I take that back down again, you can see it's adding a huge amount of contrast to the image, but using the color to do so. And then I'm going to change the mode to strong. And now we've got this huge amount of contrast and this bright spot here. That's what I'm after with this portrait. I see it as a very grungy, bluey, nice, destroyed image. Now she's looking like she really was shot on those stairs, which is what I'm after. Okay, now it's time to add some drama and fun to this image, and we're gonna do that by adding some light rays, as I said at the beginning of the video. So if I click up back to the browse panel, here are my light rays. This is actually a picture that I purchased from a stock library of concert lighting. And on the left here were the light sources themselves. So I went ahead and cropped those out because I don't want those in the image. All I want is the rays. And I blurred it a little bit just because I'm not, I don't want sharp rays, I want nice soft rays in the background. What I now need to do is bring this image into on one. So we're in the Browse panel. I'm going to click File, Manage Extras. And here's our Extras Manager. It's a texture we're going to add. So I'm going to click down on Textures. And I've already created a folder called Mic, where I pick my textures from. And that's a paper texture that I added a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to click Import. And I'm going to find my texture. So here we are. Here's my rays. I'm just going to click Open. The category it's going to go into is Mic. I'm going to click OK. And there we go. It's an imported with no errors. Fantastic. Let's close that and close that and we'll go back to effects. Now we're going to add a filter and we're going to click textures. And again, the default is always walls and concrete, but we're going to click on walls. We're going to come down to my folder. There's Mike and there's the paper texture, but now I'm going to click raise. And there's my light raise. So at the moment, not much is happening to the image. If I click off and on, it's adding them on, but we're going to change the settings a little bit. We're going to make sure the mode, instead of subtle, is lighter. There we go. Now we can see the rays. And I'm going to change the opacity all the way to 100%. There we go. There are those lovely light rays. How about that? OK, we're almost there with this portrait of Nikki. I want to add one more filter. I want to kind of soften it, but not really, and give it a little bit more punch. And the way we're going to do that is with the glow filter. And again, there are lots of different presets we can play with, but none of these really fit my liking for this particular portrait. All I'm going to do is leave the standard settings, the halo and the spotlight, I'm going to leave alone. I'm going to crank up the amount, not to 100, that's a bit too much, probably around 50 or 60, somewhere around there. I'll show you what happens if you alter the halo. That's way too soft. That's way too sharp. I'm going to leave it eh, maybe around 15 or so. And with the different modes you can use, play with these to get the different glows that you like. For this one, I like the standard spotlight. And we can see that it's given you a nice, soft, but punchy effect to the image. Now, all those filters added together mean that we went from this to this in really a short space of time. There she is, a model from the studio, cut out and placed on a standard stock background. And there she is, having a bit of a hard time in a mental institution. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Come back and watch another one soon. And see you later.